Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper at RadioPreppers.com. I'd like today um, to uh, talk to you about how I got into radio and what I'm trying to do with this channel. Um, radio Prepper, well, what does that mean exactly uh, and why uh, putting emphasis on radio? Uh, well, first of all, as a kid, I, uh, I got a pair of walkie-talkies and uh, that was magic. It, it was awesome. I, I love those things, you know, and I, and I had a few and uh, played with my friends and uh, we uh, we went around in the woods uh, uh, playing in old uh, German the World War II bunkers, World War I bunkers, actually, um, and, and just uh, imagine all sort of things, you know, <laughs> of course, um, but it, it was, uh, they walked and uh, and uh, it, it, it was magical, um, basically. Later, when I was about 14, I, uh, CB was uh, a big craze then. Uh, CB in France w uh, arrived a little bit later than in the US. In the US, I think it was the uh, 70s. Uh, in France, it was in the 80s. So I was about 14 years old when I bought a CB radio. And that also was amazing because uh, there was a sense of community back then. Uh, it wasn't the CBU here today, um, uh, although it's. I think it's got uh, gotten a little bit better now. But um, uh, CB was a family kind of affair. You know, you had the grandmothers having a CB in their kitchen. Um, you know, you could talk to other kids, uh, adults were there. Uh, uh, people were organizing uh, fox hunts. Uh, you know, uh, you can look that up. Um, and it was a good uh, communication tool. People had them in the car uh, when you had an accident. Uh, most likely someone with a CB radio would drive by, call someone else who would be in the house a few miles away and they would call uh, uh, for help. Um, today, of course, cell phones have replaced all that. But um, So uh, I didn't do any radio for, uh, for a very long time and um, of course, I use radio for aviation and, uh, you know, I always had uh, somewhat of an interest in the radio. Uh, but it was in uh, 2012 that uh, I was living in Florida. And, um, well, I decided to uh, give it a try. Uh, and I wanted to do Morse code. I was adamant about learning Morse code. And I actually, I built a kit, uh, an Elecraft T1, K1. Elecraft K1 radio. Uh, I built a radio before I had the license and before I knew Morse code. <laughs> and it was a Morse code only radio. So, um, but that forced me. It, it forced me to study for my uh, license and uh, and study the the Morse code. Uh, and actually, I passed all three uh, uh, licenses the same uh, in the same session. So, um, and uh, back then. Uh, well, before that, I would say uh, uh, about 15 years ago, you know, I wasn't worried about the future at all. Uh, everything was just fine. Uh, uh, well, the first time I, I started to worry a little bit was the, uh, the first uh, Gulf War, uh, when it looked like uh, things could go south and we could enter uh, World War III. Um, so that got me thinking a little bit, but of course, you know, I was living in America and uh, things were great and I was going to college um, uh, around uh, 95, 95 to 98 maybe. Um, the reason I uh, went to the US was to get my uh, pilot's license also, but uh, that's a little parenthesis. Um, and uh, I ended up staying um, and um, got into amateur radio uh, but the prepping stuff uh, that uh, came later uh, I was never really a big prepper but I like to be ready and um, so I was a uh, I don't know wannabe prepper <laughs> I don't know um, but I had uh, I had uh, things uh, stashed up uh, a bit and uh, communications was important for me because um, 
uh, without information, uh, you might be at risk. Um, you might be in danger and not know about it. You also don't know where to go if you have to uh, leave. Um, anyway, there are many reasons to, uh, to uh, implement a uh, communications plan in your uh, prepping uh, because uh, first of all if you are part of a group you need to stay in touch with other members of that group you want to stay in touch with people who will uh, go on you know long range patrols and uh, uh, find out what's going on around people who go on scavenging uh, expeditions and things like that um, you might want to know what's going on uh, you know, two, three hundred miles away. Uh, that's one tank of gas. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take much time to uh, force somebody uh, or a group of people to uh, to get close to you. Um, you might want to know who, uh, who else uh, can maybe help you uh, somewhere. Uh, you might want to know what people think of the situation on other continents, in other countries. Uh, your news, if, if it still exists, uh, might not be reliable. So uh, it's good to have uh, different sources of news uh, coming from different locations. Um, and really what I'm, I would like to do is to uh, create a community of people on the air and not only uh, be in contact on the internet, but being, being in contact on the air as well. And I've talked to people from from radiopreppers.com uh, on the air, and that was that was just uh, really really nice. Um, but I'd like to I'd like to I'd like more more preppers to to get into radio uh, the correct way, and uh, uh, because it's something that you can't just you know you can't just uh, buy radios, put them in a closet somewhere. And uh, after something happens, you, you bring them out and uh, you think, oh, it's going to work. It's not going to work. Uh, there is a learning curve. It's not a big one, but um, there are things to know. Uh, and again, um, when something happens, it's not the time to start learning. You need to know that beforehand. So that's my goal, is to uh, create a community and... Uh, have people uh, you know meet on the air and, and in person maybe uh, you know um, so that uh, we all have a group of friends uh, that we can uh, we can talk to uh, maybe just for morale you know uh, knowing that you're not alone in your in your situation um, so uh, I hope you join I hope you subscribe and uh, maybe I'll talk to you on the radio sometime. Have a good one.